Donald Trump has been the American president for less than six weeks. There has been conflict. He has suggested betrayal by some members of his staff, or possibly others, for leaks of information about his administration to the press. He has called the press the enemy of the American people for publishing stories about a relationship between the administration and Russian President Vladimir Putin. He has also signed many executive orders, including one to withdraw from the Trans-Pacific Partnership and another to ban travel from seven Muslim-majority countries. The U.S. court system is currently considering the executive order on travel. This evening, though, President Trump took on a softer quality as he addressed Congress and the American people. I am here tonight to deliver a message of unity and strength, and it is a message deeply delivered from my heart. A new chapter <laughs> of American greatness is now beginning. What we are witnessing today is the renewal of the American spirit. Our allies will find that America is once again ready to lead. He said there had been successes in his first weeks as president. We have begun to drain the swamp of government corruption by imposing a five-year ban on lobbying by executive branch officials and a lifetime ban on becoming lobbyists for a foreign government. We have undertaken a historic effort to massively reduce job-crushing regulations, creating a deregulation task force inside of every government agency. And we're imposing a new rule which mandates that for every one new regulation, two old regulations must be eliminated. Trump also spoke about immigration. He said he will enforce laws that are in place and take steps to keep America safe. My administration has answered the pleas of the American people for immigration enforcement and border security. By finally enforcing our immigration laws, we will raise wages help the unemployed, save billions and billions of dollars, and make our communities safer for everyone. We want all Americans to succeed, but that can't happen in an environment of lawless chaos. We must restore integrity and the rule of law at our borders. For that reason, we will soon begin the construction of a great, great wall along our southern border. As we speak tonight, we are removing gang members, drug dealers, and criminals that threaten our communities and prey on our very innocent citizens. Our obligation is to serve, protect, and defend the citizens of the United States. We are also taking strong measures to protect our nation from radical Islamic terrorism. It is not compassionate, but reckless, to allow uncontrolled entry from places where proper vetting cannot occur. Those given the high honor of admission to the United States should support this country and love its people and its values. We cannot allow a beachhead of terrorism to form inside America. We cannot allow our nation to become a sanctuary for extremists. That is why my administration has been working on improved vetting procedures, and we will shortly take new steps to keep our nation safe and to keep those out who will do us harm. He said reforming legal immigration is important to job growth in America. It's a basic principle that those seeking to enter a country ought to be able to support themselves financially. Yet in America, we do not enforce this rule, straining the very public resources that our poorest citizens rely upon. 
Switching away from this current system of lower-skilled immigration and instead adopting a merit-based system, we will have so many more benefits. It will save countless dollars, raise workers' wages, and help struggling families, including immigrant families, enter the middle class. And they will do it quickly. And they will be very, very happy indeed. He said better trade deals will help the American economy. We've lost more than one-fourth of our manufacturing jobs since NAFTA was approved. And we've lost 60,000 factories since China joined the World Trade Organization in 2001. Our trade deficit in goods with the world last year was nearly $800 billion. We must restart the engine of the American economy, making it easier for companies to do business in the United States, and much, much harder for companies to leave our country. The president called for Congress to replace the Affordable Care Act, signed into law by former President Barack Obama. He called on both parties in Congress to work together for the good of the country and the good of the American people. He also said young students should have a choice in their education. Education is the civil rights issue of our time. I am calling upon members of both parties to pass an education bill that funds school choice for disadvantaged youth, including millions of African American and Latino children. These families should be free to choose the public, private, charter, magnet, religious, or home school that is right for them. On foreign policy, he said, Our foreign policy calls for a direct, robust, and meaningful engagement with the world. It is American leadership based on vital security interests that we share with our allies all across the globe. We strongly support NATO, an alliance forged through the bonds of two world wars that dethroned fascism and the Cold War and defeated communism. But our partners must meet their financial obligations. And now, based on our very strong and frank discussions, they are beginning to do just that. In fact, I can tell you the money is pouring in. Very nice. We expect our partners, whether in NATO, the Middle East, or in the Pacific, to take a direct and meaningful role in both strategic and military operations and pay their fair share of the cost. Have to do that. Free nations are the best vehicle for expressing the will of the people, and America respects the right of all nations to chart their own path. My job is not to represent the world. My job is to represent the United States of America. President Trump ended his speech by asking Americans to come together and believe in America. I am asking all citizens to embrace this renewal of the American spirit. I am asking all members of Congress to join me in dreaming big and bold and daring things for our country. I am asking everyone watching tonight to seize this moment, believe in yourselves, believe in your future, and believe once more in America. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless the United States. I'm Dorothy Gundy.